so here we have really just a short window of detecting these malware distribution networks. I think this one appeared, appeared and disappeared in a matter of five days and infected uh, tens of thousands of web pages. Uh, the other uh, challenging part about malware distribution networks is that they're structured in a fast flux nature. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. So consider a landing page that is infected and it points to a redirector that is part of the malware distribution network. That redirector uh, redirects you to exploit server one. The exploit server one actually contains the exploit that we are able to detect with our client honey pot. Now you have landing page two. Now that guy goes to the same redirector, but now there's a fast flux nature kicking in. It redirects to another exploit server. So for us, it's not just a matter of identifying the exploit servers. We also need to identify the redirector. And if you look at the redirector in isolation, it does not really contain any malware. All it does is redirect you to some, something else. And even more challenging, the redirector could be a benign server. So last year, uh, what we identified was a redirector Twitter. Let me explain how Twitter was used as, in the redirection fast flux scheme. So you had a landing page infected with a piece of JavaScript that contacted Twitter to say, give me the popular search term from last week. Happens to be Japan. Then it redirects you to j.someday.com. So it, it dynamically generates a host name uh, out of the popular term on Twitter. Next day, and that, uh, so that host name is registered by the attacker that contains the exploit code. Next day, uh, the same script code will make the query to Twitter. Now the popular term has changed, it's maybe Tunisia. Now the host name that is generated, now T, for Tunisia, date.com, the host name is different that uh, the user is redirected to. So the exploit server changes uh, pretty much daily. And if you map that out um, on an Excel uh, spreadsheet, you see here that Twitter.com stays constant, but the server that is being redirected to that actually contains the exploit changes daily. So very, very difficult for us to detect. Um, so that was our distribution networks. That's not the, the only challenge in, in client hunting and client side attacks. Uh, the second one is evasion techniques. So if you think about our client honeypots, they're crawling the web. Uh, Angelo's uh, phony C is something that uh, is an emulated client. So if an attacker really looks at how you're making the requests to their server, they may be able to detect that you're not really having a, a real user with a real browser uh, trying to retrieve a web page. They may detect, oh, you're using a client honeypot, and then selectively say, um, uh, return a benign page, or redirect you to Bing.com. Uh, and there are several ways evasion techniques could be applied. You could look at the technology trip differences. So how does a spider monkey JavaScript engine render the date? Well, that may be a little bit different than IE. It could look at how does a human use a browser versus a machine. So how crawlers uh, may retrieve pages very quickly and then move on. But a user usually stays on a page a few seconds to read actually the content. Uh, and the third way they can do evasion techniques is simply decrease mm, the visibility of the uh, malicious web page. So I'll give you, uh, to give you an example, um, a web page could only launch attacks uh, on users when the users come from the East Coast, New York, Virginia, uh, that area. Well, why do they do that? Well, all the security companies are located on the West Coast, and if they're not smart in using a proxy network, then that is a very easy way for an attacker to still be effective in, in exploiting users, but it's also a very spear technique, right? I need, I'm gonna steal stuff from this computer geographic region. Yep, and that's, that's where the campaigns kick in as well. Uh, and lastly, so far we have uh, really been talking about uh, client honeypots that um, detect drive-by download attacks. 
So, but if you think about these three areas of integrity, availability, and confidentiality in the web space, there's a whole range of attacks. And our client honeypots primarily focus on drive by download attacks, maybe on uh, web pages that uh, host malicious web pages. But what about uh, drive by farming? What about um, yeah, social engineering attacks? And let me see whether this guy works. So this is a little um, a video that I prepared that kind of illustrates a social engineering attack. Maybe some of you have seen this. This is a rogue AV attack, or scareware attack, where um, within the browser, the attacker shows an animation of an antivirus product scanning the user's machine. But all of this is just a web page. Uh, there's really no scanning going on, um, but it's very believable. It has the same feel as Windows XP. Um, and independent of what button you click here, the end goal is the pop-up prompt, prompt uh, the download prompt, that entices the user to actually download and install malware. It, it looks nice on, on Linux, too. It looks nice on Linux, too. That's right. <laughs> and the danger here is, even if your browser is fully patched, if you run the latest version of Chrome, latest version of IE, everything patched, you're still at risk. And that's actually something that we're seeing at Bing, that, that people are moving, that attackers are moving away from uh, drive by download attacks because browsers are increasingly having mechanisms to update themselves and even the plugins to update themselves. So they're going for the weakest thing, the end user. Uh, and here are some, some references. Um, there's actually a paper uh, on Phony C. Um, there's a bunch of papers on. Uh, our web page. Uh, next week I'm going to India to talk a little bit more about malware distribution networks. So, so there's a paper uh, that comes out uh, that allows us to detect those. Um, and here is a link where you can download PhoneDC and capture HPC. Thank you. Thank you.